The red center of Australia is an extraordinary place. Although it's desolate in many ways, it's home to wallabies, kangaroos, dingoes, bilbies, and emus, as well as all the desert snakes and lizards you would expect. It also holds the world's largest camel herds, after European explorers brought them over when their first attempts with horses ended in failure. Unfortunately, our trip out there ran into some failures of its own. So, uh, we're supposed to be taking a plane from the Cairns Airport to Katajuta, which is just a three-hour flight, super simple, except our flight has been canceled. Mary's working on trying to get uh, something else handled. Uh, they want us to fly now from Cairns to Brisbane, stay the night in Brisbane, fly from Brisbane to Sydney, and fly from Sydney to Cairns, which puts us there an entire day late, uh, so we're definitely not doing that. All right, so remember how I said we're definitely not doing that? Turns out we're doing that. After finally making it and just a few hours of sleep, we woke up early and made our way out to Katajuta to catch the sunrise against it. And it did not disappoint. Katajuta is one of the rare places in the world that has dual world heritage status. One for its sheer natural beauty and the other for its rich indigenous heritage. The site is so sacred that most photography and videography has been banned. The exception being the long distance sunrise that we took this morning and our next destination, Walpa Gorge. Katajuta, which means many heads in Pijanjara, the language of the Anangu people, is a place of great spiritual significance. The great serpent god, Wanambi, spends the majority of his time atop the rocks, but comes down periodically to turn the warm winds into tornadoes when wrong has been done by the men below. Though there was no threat of that this morning, the wind was freezing. The Anangu are very protective of their cultural practices, even within their own tribe. There's an entire side of Katajuta where women are prohibited from going. Traditions are passed down through stories, and those stories are only revealed when the elders determine that a member of the tribe is ready to hear them. The stories that we as outsiders are allowed to hear are only those that they tell to their youngest children. The Anangu people also don't typically allow themselves to be filmed or photographed, so out of respect, you will not see them in this video. pigment nerd moment, but we're in the central desert of Australia, so everything around here is red, but where the ants have uh, dug from under the ground, it's so much more red than what's on the surface. There's really one of three ways that we gather pigment on these adventures. Um, one is that we're given permission 
from the indigenous people, the First Nations people, to go in and collect that pigment. Two is that we hire an indigenous First Nations guide to come with us and help us collect it and show us how to do it properly and with respect. And then the third is that we simply don't get that permission and that they go in and collect that pigment for us. And that's what we did here at Katajuta. And in doing so, we purchase it from them and we're able to help support their community. The paintings created from our time at Katajuta are infused with not only the pigments we acquired while we were there, but the time spent with the Anangu people, our extraordinary hike through the valley at Walpa Gorge, and the energy we felt the entire time at this unbelievable place. paintings are available on my website.